Nathan, let's start start with you. Yeah. Hello, my name's Nathan. Um, I'm a freshman um, pursuing a mechanical engineering degree. Where are you from? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. All right. Awesome. Hi, my name is Maggie. I'm a rehabilitation and human services major. And where are you from? A really small town. It's near Bedford, PA. Uh-huh. Hi, my name's Cornyn. I'm a senior at Penn State. Um, I'm a film major and a dart major. I'm from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. You're in the, the National Guard or the Reserves or what? I'm in the United States Marine Corps. In the Marine Corps, yeah, that's right. And you're doing your degree. Okay. You're really lucky to find 10% compound interest unless yeah, yeah, you yeah. invest for a significantly long period of time, which people with a lot of money can do. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But dude, if it's 8%, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be, if it's 7%, it's still gonna be the same thing. I wanted to ask for um, those who are, those advocating uh, the rich should help the you know, lower class, help them out, build a culture around it. Why should they? I could argue the same with you, by the way. If I compare you with somebody in Haiti, like we're a hundred dollars. If you gave me a hundred dollars, I could, I know where I can give that in Haiti. They would save the lives of at least two, maybe three people. I know that. No, I'm like super fortunate, super fortunate, like yeah. where I'm at. Like, no, 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 but I think we are, our, what you just said is really valuable. It is valuable. But I also find it really interesting why you didn't ask why I have no debt. And that's because both of my great grandparents came to America with literally nothing. Both one built a business from the ground up on his own, and the other one uh-huh. went to college as a first year student and took on all that debt and worked really hard so that I didn't have to. This is the problem. What you just raised, they didn't just come and people just gave them money. They came and they worked really hard. And so when they come and they work really hard, and then they pass that down to other people like you, it's like, that's, the, that's what life is about. This is the miracle of compound interest, one of the greatest miracles in the, in the known universe, right? So this is, you invest $5 a day, that's the cost of a Starbucks coffee, every single day. And you do it for 10 years, and see the blue? That's the $5, but look at the orange. You invest it at 10% compounding interest. So you want to focus on the orange. The orange is all the money that the, stock, the market makes for you on compounding interest, okay? Look at 10 years. That's eh, not a big deal. Look at 20 years. Oh, that orange starts to grow. Look at 30 years. Look at how the orange really starts. Look at 40 years. So generational wealth, it's not surprising that when I look at this, and I look at white people who get a head start in this country, it's not surprising that like, whoa, man, if you start with a lot of money, you're gonna like grow that money. So what you just said, right? You're back here trying to manage everything, but other people are like jumping ahead, Nathan. Um, well, I do agree that compounding interest is amazing. Um, if you account for inflation, it's a lot less severe than that. So it only really works when you're at the top to stay at the top. So it can have benefits and that's if you, if you bring inflation in, yep. Okay, so here, let me show you this. Notice, so this is, you invest just a thousand dollars and you put it in the market, all right? So now, think about this right here. Think about these numbers, everybody. Look at these numbers. Look at these, this is on average. These are averages, okay? Look at these numbers. Now, here. So this is 10%, earning 10% compound interest, $1,000, you put it, you invest it, that's it, nothing else. The end of 10 years, you have $2,600. Okay, cool. The end of 20 years, you have 67. The end of 30, you have this. The end of 40, you have 45, that's pretty good, right? $1,000, if you have $1,000 to put away at the end of 45 years. But watch this, what do you think is behind the black? Watch what happens. In 70 years, at 10%, $1,000 is worth almost $800,000. Okay? Now, I want to say, oh, okay. So I want to go back to the guys at the top here. Not the ones down there. I want to go to the ones up here. And if you're up here, 
what's the likelihood that somewhere in your family, people have been investing thousands of dollars over the course of long periods of time? And when I think about the United States and the race-based system that we have, and I think about the history of black people and Hispanic people and Native American people, it doesn't strike me at all that the people up here would be disproportionately white. Not entirely white, but disproportionately white. Look at that. Look at that. It's like, man, you just, it's, a, it's a head start. It's like people in the West. Does this surprise you at all? No, not, not really. I mean, I think it actually goes even worse than this in a way. Again, ignoring um, inflation, but you're really lucky to find 10% compound interest unless yeah, yeah, you yeah. invest for a significantly long period of time, which people with a lot of money can do. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But dude, if it's 8%, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be, if it's 7%, it's still going to be the same thing. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, it's not going to be as high as that, obviously, but it's irrelevant. The point is, right, compounding, getting a head start. So, so what we have, we have this idea that when you all are starting here, you're all going to get your college degrees. The three of you are going to get your college degrees, okay? And you're all going to start at the same place on the starting line. But you're not. We're going to start in different places. And, and then you say, oh, okay, what do we do then? You're, with your student loans... I mean, you know, you're you got a lot. You're, you're going to have a lot that you're balancing. Is, do you have loans? Do you have loans? No. Student loans? Do you have student loans? But the, but the military is paying for. I did school before a little bit of school before the military. Then I joined, and I don't have to use my GI Bill because. Through the College of Communications, if you're military, they offer you a full ride scholarship. Got so I have a full ride scholarship, Dude, without, okay, and which taxpayers are paying for, which is good. <laughs> and free housing. Gee, do you have a question? What's your question? So I'm fortunate enough to be from a family who began as a working class and moved up to an upper class. So I know both perspectives and I can bring up questions that would trigger both sides. And um, I wanted to ask for um, those who are, those advocating uh, the rich should help the you know, lower class, help them out, build a culture around it. Why should they? Yeah, why should Right, because like we're talking about like the importance of inheritance and how and how and how valuable the head start is, right? So, if you know that your next children or your next generation or your next family member needs that kind of money for a head start, why should they stop building wealth? Why should they give that up to other you know poor families? Dude. Good, go ahead. Me. One of you. I actually never said that they should. Like, it is their hard-earned money. So, you know, good for them. But also, like, at the same time, it's so much money that you're not even using. Like, you can throw away five yachts. I'm talking about, like, crazy amounts of money. You can throw away five yachts, and, like, it is barely a dent in your pocket. When I'm saying, like, right now, two grand would change my life. And Dude. like, can we get to a point where like, okay, you're a billionaire, like you won Monopoly, you know? Okay, all right, that's fair. That's the socialist mentality, which is, we're basically, we live in a semi-socialist system anyway, but I could argue the same with you, by the way. If I compare you with somebody in Haiti, like we're $100, if you gave me $100, I, could, I know where I can give that in Haiti they would save the lives of at least two, maybe three people. I know that. No, I'm like super fortunate, super fortunate, like yeah. where I'm at. And no, like, no, no, but I think we are, our, what you just said is really valuable. It is valuable, dude. I mean, I believe in giving back, but it's not because I know it's the right financial decision. It's because of my religious beliefs. Okay. Um, but I also find it really interesting why you didn't ask why I have no debt. And that's because both of my great-grandparents came to America with literally nothing, both 
one built a business from the ground up on his own and the other one uh -huh. went to college as a first year student and took on all that debt and worked really hard so that I didn't have to. This is the problem. What you just raised, what Nathan just raised, look, people up here, Nathan, some of the people up here are like your grandparents, right? They didn't just come and people just gave them money. They came and they worked really hard. And so when they come and they work really hard, and then they pass that down to other people like you, it's like, that's, the, that's what life is about. So your grandparents are exactly the kind of, yeah, so you're sitting here as well you should be sitting here. And you should not have debt because they made good decisions. They had children. They had your parents. Your parents had you. And that's the nature of how this thing works. But the problem is we got to figure out what happens to the people who don't do that, the people who are down here. We have to make sense of it. Yeah. Um, the higher up you get, the more opportunities you get to give to others. And that's where I, I'm bringing up the corruption part. Yeah. So these people that have the chance to give others opportunity aren't giving, to, giving it to them or giving it to the people who deserve it. Like people are okay with hoarding all this money and I'm not saying they should give it away. I do not believe that. But like we are okay with sitting around and having thousands of homeless people in America and having starving children. And yeah. like we're okay with it because we have a lot of money in our pocket. Yeah, well, we're okay with it also because, yeah, I would agree with you. That's worth applause.